I'm Campbell Roberts. And I'm Sue Hay, and in this episode, we're talking about housing. Recently, the OECD highlighted what many New Zealanders have already suspected. New Zealand has the most expensive housing in the world. Whether you see this as a good thing or a bad thing probably depends on where you are in the housing market. If you own your home, or better still if you own several houses as an investment, then high house prices are a bonanza. If on the other hand you don't own your home and instead have to rent or make do by crowding in with friends and relatives, then a high housing price is bad news. In this episode, looking at issues that might influence how we vote, we consider housing, particularly the ability of modest and low-income New Zealanders to get into a house that is good for their families. But first, let's hear from a Salvation Army social worker who is working with families that are struggling to put a roof over their heads. Uh, my name's Sue Iripa and I've been one of the social workers here at Salvation Army at Manukau office for nine years. A lot of the problems that we've been faced with um, in regards to housing are evictions, um, increase of rent, um, overcrowding. Uh, we also seen families um, um, due to DV issues, you know, being kicked out, uh, broken relationships, um, so they look for an alternative. Um, so more or less emergency housing would be the first need. Yeah, so that's the short term, and then we look into the long term. Well, in the last six months, it's gotten worse. Um, over the years, we've been able to cope and access alternative housing for these families. But of late, there's been a huge struggle, and that's due to the lack of housing that's out there. New Zealand's housing problems are serious for some people and their families. As a country, a number of things are going wrong. We're not building enough affordable houses in the right places. In some areas, housing is unaffordable for the people who need it. Some houses are in poor condition and affect the health and well-being of the people who live in them. The housing shortage is particularly serious in Auckland and Christchurch. In Christchurch, the shortage is a direct result of earthquakes. Some people are still in quite damaged housing because of the complexity of unravelling the mess of their insurance situation in post-earthquake zoning. Others simply can't bounce back because house prices and rents have risen sharply. Rents in Christchurch have risen by 30% since the February 2011 earthquake. The drivers of the Auckland housing shortage are population growth and rising land prices. Each year, Auckland population grows by more than 20,000 people. That's over half of New Zealand's overall population growth in a year. This growth, combined with planning restrictions and rising costs of providing infrastructure such as roads and drainage, have forced up land prices to the point where it costs at least 200000 for a small section and over 400000 for a modest new house. The government's new approach is insisting that the Auckland Council speed up development approvals in new special housing areas, and this will help unblock the process, but it seems unlikely to lower the housing costs so that they are affordable for modest income families. Over the past 20 years, and across all of New Zealand, we've seen declining rates of home ownership. The 2013 census, for instance, shows that the number of adults who own their own homes has fallen below 50% for the first time in over 60 years. This trend seems likely to continue. From our Salvation Army Community Ministry statistics, we know this means families shift from house to house more frequently, sometimes three or four times a year, disrupting their children's education, health and lives. New Zealand's rental housing is generally of poor quality and poorly maintained. This means that tenants are more likely to live in cold, damp houses. Children then become sick, as evidenced by the very significant increase in rheumatic fever amongst our population, particularly amongst Māori and Pacific children. With good reason, the Salvation Army and many others in the community believe that New Zealand's housing is at a crisis point, and that a more deliberate and more expensive intervention by government is essential for creating a fair, healthy and prosperous society. The Salvation Army is advocating for four bold new housing programs as a way of addressing the housing crisis and creating a fairer and healthier New Zealand. Firstly, we'd like to see government investing in an extensive housing building program 
It aims to supply thousands of additional affordable houses in areas where there's a shortage. This program should involve the enterprise of the private and community sectors and be tied into skills training and urban development programs as well. Secondly, this house building program should create far better prospects for young families to own their own home. To do this, government needs to roll out an adequately funded home ownership program for all those who need it. Thirdly, our rental housing is most often cold and damp, and this needs to change. We believe that government should use both subsidy and regulation to achieve this. A house insulation subsidy should now be directed towards landlords and a timetable set for acquiring all rental housing to have a warrant of fitness by 2020. Finally, we must not forget the poorest and most vulnerable people and their ongoing need for support through social housing. The Salvation Army believes that government should develop a social housing plan that identifies future demand for social housing and works to deliver this over a 10-year period. As an essential part of this plan, government should look to expand the social housing stock by at least 500 units per year. Building houses and assisting families into home ownership or social housing is not just an economic intervention. It can be a transformational social policy and a way of achieving better social justice. When we build houses, we also have the opportunity to build livable New Zealand neighbourhoods and communities. When we assist families into these houses, we can set them up to succeed in life. As you consider your vote in the 2014 general election, I ask that you think about the housing question and about the important role that housing has played and can still play in our development as a country and as a people. You might want to look at the next of our election series, which is on social hazards in New Zealand.